Welcome up levelers. We're in the season of the ROI of coaching in the workplace. Today's guest is a lived example of that, and she'll be sharing true stories of her experience. So let me welcome Holly Ilderton to the pod. She is a coactive trained coach who has worked for global retailer Lululemon as a manager, trainer, and internal leadership development coach for over a decade. Her work centers around the idea that when we as individuals can tap into our own values, our own uniqueness, and our resilience, we not only elevate how we experience our own lives, but we also impact how organizations and ultimately how global systems operate. Welcome, Holly, to the Uplevel podcast. Mm, thank you so much, Christy. I'm thrilled to be here. Me too. I was just telling you, I'm so glad you said yes. One of the outcomes of this season is interviewing leaders like yourself who are committed to their own growth and developing them themselves as a coach and then developing others within their organization through the way that you show up as a leader. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had a privilege of hearing some of these stories and like, it's almost like these are mini business cases that I want you to bring forward today so that folks who are considering training their leaders in coaching can hear it directly from a leader who's been doing it and the impact it's having on the business and people and on engagement and or other leaders like yourself who may be dabbling in getting this kind of training and they're not sure yet if it's right for them. So let's just start with how did coaching find you or how did you find coaching? Mm, yes. Um, this story has, uh, it's, it's, it's a long time in the making, uh, coaching, I would say coaching found me when I, I joined, um, Lululemon again, over a decade ago. Um, and I, and I had a few careers prior to, to joining this organization, different career paths and, 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 uh, yoga led me to this one, managing people led me into this one. And, um, one of Lululemon's, uh, concepts of how you, how we manage people. One of our core values really of managing people is the concept of, of weaving in coaching into how we manage, how we give feedback, how we, it's, 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 it's an expectation. And at that point in time, um, this concept of coaching was, was somewhat foreign to me, honestly. Um, and it was very daunting. It was, uh, I was, I was scared uh, about it. I was like, how am I going to, I don't know how to do this. I can give feedback. I can have conversations, but uh, to actually be a coach for someone that's new. So um, over the years, um, because it was a core comp part of my responsibilities, I latched onto it and began to just really like learn on my own and through um, some of the internal training that we were provided at Lululemon. And I began to recognize how the beauty of it was that I was already naturally someone in my personal life who people thought advice from or would come to to just talk through something. And so as I started to connect the dots there, I realized that there was a, a lot of power in this um, in this concept of coaching in the workplace. Um, so it really it stemmed from that. And then I would I would add on to that fast forward a few years later, probably five years really into it. I um, was I applied we Lululemon um, started their own internal leadership coaching program. And I, I, I'm going to, I don't know the exact years, but I know it's been at least like eight, I think about eight years or so ago. And um, a couple of years into it, I applied and was accepted as uh, an internal leadership development coach. And, um, and when I did that, I also began to receive coaching from one of our internal coaches as I started in that program. And it, this is really where the power of coaching became just crystal clear to me. I, I, I got this coach who I didn't know prior to this, lived across the country, and we began to connect. Um, and at the time, not only was I growing in my role at Lululemon internally, but I also was um, experiencing a lot of personal, pretty severe personal 
goings on. My mother was very ill and I was trying to figure out how do I, how do I do all of this? Like, right. How do I be the daughter that I, I want to be for her? How do I maintain the boundaries that I need to maintain for myself? And then also how do I continue to maintain my work responsibilities in this very challenging environment for me personally. And um, his skill, um, he was also a, a CTI trained coach in our leadership coach program. It, it cracked me wide open and revealed to me in a new way, this element of acceptance. I think for me at that point, it was really like self-acceptance. Um, and that grew into other things, but it was, I, I truly was able to finally like recognize here's where you are, here's who you are, here's what you'd bring to these scenarios. And that is enough. And, um, so it really, it grew from there. Um, and it's, and it's taken off from there, but I, I always look back to that and give this example as, um, he, and he used all the tools, metaphor, just these really beautiful things for me. And again, it cracked me wide open. And, um, and I had that aha moment of like the true power of coaching, um, on a personal level, um, and as it relates to, um, a, a professional environment. What a, a gift when an organization invests mm -hmm. in its people in this way. You know, we always say when we're training coaches, the best way to learn the modality is to be receiving coaching. Mm -hmm. So when an organization makes that investment in developing leaders and coaching skills, plus makes a coach available to them, boy, do they see that return, mm -hmm. you know, and you're living proof of it. Let's get like right to kind of a, a day in Holly's world. You are like, give us the, cause I know you're managing a large mm -hmm. operation, a large store. Tell us like how many direct reports and um, let's get that level set. And then let's weave in how you're using coaching to. Absolutely. And the ship. Yeah. 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 So I, um, I manage a, a large store um, within the retail segment of Lululemon and um, currently I've got, I think at this state, we've, we've got about 40 people on, on my team alone. Um, and my role really, I have a couple of, I have five direct reports, two of which also have their own direct reports, um, layered into that number of 40. So, um, that's been an interesting thing. We've gone through some organizational structural change over the last couple of years. Um, prior to that, all 40 of those people would have reported directly into me. Um, and now it's, it's, it's a little bit different. There's some layers to it. And so um, it's, it's been very interesting because I'm also teaching and training people that have direct reports how to weave in the skill of coaching into their performance management, into, into their yeah, interactions day to day. So um, that's, that's the, that's the team, um, the mix of full-time and part-time people and varying just all kinds of diversity, all, all kinds of backgrounds. And that's one of the things I really love about it. Um, so day to day, gosh, the other thing I really appreciate about um my my job and the thing that's kept me um with this organization and in this in this position for as long as it has is it changes every day and a lot of times you don't really know you can plan it out to a t and um and it and something's gonna happen i think that's just the world of retail um of course so um day to day i oftentimes will spend a portion of my day um i usually spend time in the mornings just getting organized seeing here's what was planned and here's what's actually occurring today. What needs to change? Um, there's typically a, 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 we call it a leader meeting at the beginning of the day to, to set the tone, what, what needs to occur today. And we're going to align. So we have an alignment meeting. Um, and then from there, it can be a mix of um, one-on-ones with my direct reports where um, there could be agendas set already, or perhaps they're bringing the agenda or the agenda has created itself because something has occurred in our world. Um, and, and then there's also a mix of, I have my own set of clients within the organization of Lululemon. So not people that report to me, but people that are part of our overarching um, leadership 
coaching program who work with me directly as a coach and them as a coachee and less as a manager. Uh, and so those parts of my day are spent there as well. And I often try to, to do that um, in my home office, which is where you see me now. Um, and a lot of the other is within the four walls of our of our store. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, and it can be a mix. Is there meetings, one-on-one, some coaching clients, it's uh, it's a lot of variety. And are you ever spending time on the floor? Or is yes, yeah, yeah. I do spend. I, one of the other tenants um, of Lululemon, which and I haven't worked in another retail organization. This is the first retail organization I've worked in. Um, but one of one of our core tenants is that managers we lead from the floor as well, so that we can really interact and we can not only see how our team members, our employees are are interacting with the humans that are coming in our doors each and every day. And, um, you know, not only are they getting them what they're seeking when they come in, but how are they being as humans, you know, when they're interacting with these people? So, yeah, oftentimes I'll spend a little portion of my day on the floor with my team and with the guests that are coming in and out of our door. So just that. <laughs> just That's that. all. Just all that, yeah. holding all of those, <laughs> all of those plans and wearing all these different hats. You know, I, I do think it's one of the toughest jobs is re- retail and a, a leader within a retail environment. And so I take my hat off to you. Mm. And I, I want to uh, have you, if you can, recall an exact story of where you used coaching, whether it was on um, a team member on the floor or a guest, right? Because I know that this feels mm-hmm. guest conversations. Give us a yeah. yeah direct experience of it. Yeah, so many. I feel like this. Yeah, coaching. Um, just a, a a pitch here for for coaching for getting trained in coaching. Period. It helps all human interaction. Um, whatever it is. There's one that really comes to mind that has stuck with me um, over the years. This happened um, a handful of years ago. And I had a, this was a a manager of mine, um, a team member who was also managing people. And they were one of those leaders who had natural charisma, like people naturally wanted to listen to what they had to say. And as a result, they had their hand in a lot of different areas of our business. Um, And over the course of a few months, I was seeing different slip ups and it could be, you know, a, a small slip up on a, you know, not miss like missing a deadline on a, a project that they were working on it to they could be, they could be coming in the store one day leading a, a team, you know, executing something and the consistency of who they were able to be from day to day was shifting and changing. And so all of that had been occurring and, and um, to, to, you know, small, I would say, I would say ultimately large impact, but small impacts that were leading up into something large. And and finally um, they made, they made a, a pretty big mistake one day um, that just had to be dealt with directly. But I knew that, um, there was something else going on here that all of these things were tied and this person was uh, a, a formerly high performer um, and that there had to be a root. So, um, you know, I addressed the situation that needed to be addressed, gave the feedback that needed to be given right away and then set up a time to talk to them one-on-one. Um, and during this conversation, I, I really just got curious with what was happening with them. Like I, I, I shared with them what I had noticed, you know, and I had a few examples of the inconsistencies. I shared with them what I had seen previously. And, um, but the heart of that conversation was really me getting curious with them about what was occurring for them. And I think for me in that conversation, what I was able to do was like, remove the remove. I had no judgment. This was occurring. It was impacting my business was impacting the people on my team. And there was a human being in front of me and I was able to remove all the other stuff and really listen to what was occurring for this person. And through the skill of coaching, through the ability to ask additional questions as, as this person was sharing what was coming up for them, I was able to get them to get to the heart of what was occurring for them themselves. 
And when they were able to do that, you could almost see this. They were like, like, it's like they didn't know what was happening really until that moment. They were dealing with all of these internal things and it was coming out and showing in their workplace environment in this way and most likely in their personal world in many other ways. And when they were able to identify the root of what was occurring for them, it was just, it was a, it was a, it, it, it opened up a whole new possibility for them. And so weaving in the skill of coaching and then also weaving in the, 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 the skill of management, which is bottom lining what they had, you know, shared and then making it understood that this was like, you have a choice to make here. We're going to go path A or path B and it's up to you. You, you make the call and I'm your accountability partner and I um, believe in you. I know that you can do this. And at that point, um, I didn't really know how it was going to go, to be honest with you, because you don't know whether people are, you know, just, you just don't know. I knew that she could do it, but I didn't know if she was going to do it. And um, so I saw her performance um, uptick, like, you know, right away, there was a, there was a huge shift, but more than that, this uncovered some larger goals that this employee had. And it led to this employee taking ownership of those goals, moving across the country to take a, a, a promotion, like not only a few, few months later. And that person has kept in touch with me all of these years and shared with me how profound this like probably 45 minute conversation out in the courtyard outside of a store um, had on them and they've continued to grow within the organization and are, are just, um, up to pretty big things. So that's one that I really love because it, it gets, it was, it was like, it opened up not only like, were they aware of their performance, but it also gave them the ability to see what they really wanted and they went for it. So it was, it was big. Yeah. There's the ROI of coaching right there. Right. There you are. And they are still with Lululemon. It's great. It's wild, you know? Amazing. Yeah. And, and uh, so like, here's some things I want to pull out from that. So first of all, some of the, the ways you were being and the skills you were using. So mm -hmm. when we talk about being coach-like, really it is embodying curiosity. And that's what mm -hmm. I've heard you speak to numerous times there was also immediate feedback that had to be provided. So you you did that. And then you set up the time to have the deeper conversation. Mm -hmm. and this is really typical for, for leaders, especially if there's something that's creating an unintended impact on others, on the business. Yes. You know, you can't wait to have that development conversation. You do need to provide feedback. So I want to talk about the distinction between feedback and coaching in a bit. Mm. I'm going to keep pulling out. So curiosity as a way of being. And you um, also were really holding their development. It wasn't mm. making them wrong. It was about really uncovering what's the root of this and having them self-identify take responsibility. And that's like the beauty of coaching. When we ask powerful questions that are focused on the person versus the problem or the challenge or the situation, the individual gets that time to simmer, to be mm. in there, you know, I don't know, why is this happening? And like the unlock that this person had, you know, your story is such an example of that. Um, and so what were some of the other skills you leaned into in that particular conversation? Mm. I think um, certainly one of the skills that was present, very present in that conversation was this, um, this third level listening, really like listening for what is being said, but also like, what is, what, what am I, what is perhaps present that is not being said there. And, um, and again, just like, I think as a manager, as a manager, being a coach, it's so important to, again, remove, it's like, you know, you have an outcome that you need as a manager. However, the person in front of you is ultimately going to choose their own outcome. And, at the end of the day, you can make it and you will make it clear what the outcome needs to be for you. But before that can really happen to allow that power of coaching to come in, 
they've got to be able to identify their own outcome. And then, you know, hopefully those two meet somewhere and they usually do if, if, if it's the right situation for them, to, for that employee to be in. So I think that third level listening, I remember in this conversation um, and a skill I often use in many of my, um, I would say performance coaching conversations, which is, you know, what I would call this is um, metaphor. So really like linking um, sometimes very complex scenarios because oftentimes you know, well, we're all, all the time, but, you know, in, in a work environment, especially because there's like added pressure, we're, we're kind of like undoing all of these things that are occurring in our head. And if we as a coach can remove ourselves, really be listening for what's being said, what's not being said, and then either bottom line it. So bottom lining something that the person is perhaps just going around in circles saying and or use that skill of metaphor to make it like really clear to what to really clear to them what you're hearing. And and oftentimes that can be what resonates with them. And they're like, yes, that that's actually that's it. And I couldn't quite get there. And that's it. So those are two things, bottom lining and the and the skill of metaphor for sure. And definitely deep, deep listening. Deep listening. So let's take that scenario. And I talk about the BC before coaching and mm-hmm. AC after coaching. So imagine you were in that situation, which you probably were at some point before you had coach training and before you were like purely coached. How might have that situation gone down? BC? Mm, yeah. Before coaching. Yeah. I I think, um, as I said before, I think I, I always just as a human, I'm, I'm curious. And I, and I, and I oftentimes over the course of my tenure as a manager over the years, I've actually had to learn how to be more direct and candid with feedback because I always want people to feel good, feel seen, feel heard. So um, I think probably what would have happened is I would have delivered some type of feedback. It probably would have been, um, less direct than I had designed it to be because knowing I had, knowing that I had the coaching portion of this woven into my approach allowed me to give the direct feedback, knowing that I was going to get into the human side of things as well. So I think there's one part of it is there probably would have been feedback given that was uh, less direct and, and thus less powerful. Um, and I think without the skill of coaching before coaching BC, I would have been curious about everything that was going on in that person's life for sure. I would have asked a lot of the questions, but not from the, not from the view and not from the role of being a coach, but from the role of being just someone in their lives, you know, like a, a a friend, um, you know, just someone who cares. And I think what most likely would have happened and what happened often with me, prior to bringing in the skill of coaching is the feedback wouldn't land because it would have been indirect. And then I had also just asked a lot of questions, getting curious about how this person was. And ultimately at the end of the conversation, I would have just really wanted them to feel like they were okay. So they wouldn't have their performance. Maybe they would have felt okay leaving the conversation and cared for as a human, but I'm not so sure that their performance or their, ability to take responsibility for th- for what they had recognized would have occurred at all. It probably would have, I would have just left it. And perhaps that would have happened later on, but I think it, it would have stalled, right? Like ultimately it's like their development would have been hindered um, and would have been slowed by, slowed down by my approach as a manager prior to bringing in coaching and having coaching training intentionally woven into my approach. There's an ROI yeah. right there. So yep. develop leaders so that leaders can develop other leaders. It is a complete trickle effect, right? Absolutely. And it, what I'm hearing is you having these skills gave you the confidence. It empowered you to show up in your leadership, still human, still mm-hmm. caring for the human, but there's a lot more empowerment in having 
a skill set and a mindset that is about developing others. And as the result, what we hear in your BC and AC is that um, you you were developed, so you were able to develop others. And now we know this individual has gone on and is doing that. And yes. I mean, that's, that's why we're doing this. Yeah, that's, absolutely. That's- absolutely. And I think there is something to to like the, like really being confident in the coach where the coaching training comes in, in addition to how we're being and how we're able to be with our team in those types of conversations where feedback needs to be given, there needs to be there, there, it's like, there's got to be a structure to it. And so when you're when you understand where the role of coaching fits in, how the skills of coaching can be applied to these conversations, but also how the feedback and the documentation and all the other aspects of management, you can then, you know, cater and create a very strategic approach to the development of the people on your team while also holding them accountable. Whereas I think without the coaching training, um, you might be a great human and a good listener, but it's just, it's not going to land the same way. And it is going to just hinder people's development overall. Um, there definitely is something for me in creating the container has been much easier since I've had training in management and training in coaching. Beautiful. It also helps people to move from say best friend manager or leader to uh, leader, leader, ideal. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're talking about, making that transition for folks who do struggle with the people pleasing and the being like mm-hmm. So common, you know, it's so common as specifically in like a retail environment where people skills is such a big, important competence Mm -hmm. for who you hire. Yes. What is your, give us your kind of bottom line definition and distinction between feedback and coaching. Mm, Yeah, that's a great, it's so good because I I think again at, um, at, at Lululemon and this could happen at other organizations, I'm sure, but when we lean so we lean so much into coaching that oftentimes new managers can confuse feedback and coaching. And I hear them like interchange, like they're not interchangeable words, you know, they're two very different things. And um, so for me, feedback is, is you are telling someone what you have observed and the impact that it has had. Like there is a telling happening as a, as a manager, you're delivering something like this, this has occurred. This is the impact it's had. Tell me about that, you know, and it is very direct. Um, it's very candid and it's, it, but it is a, it's a telling a coaching conversation is there's no, there could be a telling aspect of it. Like, hi, I just saw this occur but actually the coaching comes in when you are asking the questions and allowing that person to find the answer. And, um, and I think there's there, of course there are time, there's time for feedback and there's time for coaching. And sometimes they're completely separate entities. I don't know if we, maybe we'll get into that some, but, and then sometimes they need to be like woven very closely together, especially when we're, um, performance managing these softer skills, these like leadership development skills, um, it's, 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 it's hard to do that with direct feedback alone. Um, so yeah, but those are the two differences. I would say like feedback is, um, direct it's, it's an observed occurrence and coaching is asking questions, knowing that that person in front of you has an answer that they're going to give to you in return. Beautiful synthesis. I love that. Um, when I talk about feedback and you you use the language observable occurrence, I'll say an observable behavior. What mm-hmm. is the saying or doing or not saying or doing that's creating an impact? And uh, and then coaching, it, it what it feels like is um, an extension of a feedback conversation. So yeah. you want to be providing constructive feedback and lots of positive feedback, lots Mm -hmm. of working. Hey, you know, I saw you speak to that customer and you asked this question and the impact was the customer felt seen and heard and, you know, and then they bought, you know, more, more, Mm -hmm. right. And so that's great. So then it's like, so what was it like for you Mm -hmm. remember to be in that conversation? 
And what did you learn by asking that extra question, right? And 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 this is where we get from um, managing to leadership. Yes. You no, know, I yeah. think feedback is a management skill. It's essential for um, developing people. And then coaching is a leadership competency, which is about developing leaders. Mm. It's, you know, and and we want to. We at up level, our mission is to bring more humanity mm-hmm. to the workplace and to have cultures of leaders. Everyone's a leader. It doesn't matter if they have direct reports, but they're a leader and they they get to have that experience if they have a leader like Holly, who is coaching them and developing them and providing developmental feedback, positive and constructive. Yeah. Yay! Love it. I know. <laughs> Get out over here, Holly. Get it. <laughs> Love I mean, it. I just see this. I like hear this, um, I, and I feel it right now. That what what I feel in an environment where where we are coaching as leaders and where we are developing leaders is there is this there is this um this vibrancy, this like true um there's true there's a desire to grow and to learn, and it's like this kinetic energy can be felt. Whereas you go into many other work environments where that if that is not there and not present, then it's just static, you know. And it's like, okay, we might be doing okay, or maybe not at all. But there is just this this static presence to it, and yeah, I just feel this like kinetic energy, this excitement, this vibrancy that is alive and well. And I think that is the difference. People sometimes will ask me, you know, what's the, what, what, like when I come into this store, or when I go into leather Lululemon's, like it just feels different in here. That's the difference. That is, that is the difference. That is the difference. It's a culture of leaders, mm-hmm. you know, and they're being coached at all levels and everyone's being developed. Everyone has goals and has somebody that's supporting them to work towards those goals. You yeah. know, that's, that's what we want to see more of in other organizations. And the past four years, we all know that on planet Earth, it's been crisis after crisis, chaos, uncertainty, constant change. So any human has to has had to really dig deep and find new ways of navigating this. Um, and so how has coaching for you both receiving it and having the competency to provide your team, how has it helped you all navigate these past four years? Mm, yeah, I know what a what a time we are in. What a shit show. <laughs> what, a, what a time we are in. Um, an interesting fact too is I actually took on my very first coaching client, like leadership development coaching clients. I took on in March of 2020. So it was a time and, um, and it was, yeah, it's been definitely the pandemic and the, 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 all of the upheaval since then. I mean, that's just just one thing of so many other world events that has, has occurred, but it's been, that's been a big part of my journey with coaching. And for me, having a coach, I, I think what that has allowed me to do with the chaos, with the unknown, with the feeling out of control, feeling like, is this ever going to end? It's allowed me to um, process all of the different like synopsis that are going off in my brain that can, or that are creating this, like, you know, could be fear, be it, you know, um, just, I mean, I think fear is the big one, right? Fear, um, perhaps just like, is this ever going to get any better? Like, you know, hopefulness, it's allowed me to like take all of those thoughts and really be able to understand the bottom line of like what's happening, what is occurring for me as an individual in this environment. How, and it, it's given me the tool to articulate that. And as a result of it giving me the tool to articulate that, it's allowed me to see what choice I have in each moment more than I had than I think I would be able to without receiving coaching. So it's allowed me clarity and in, 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 let's, let's just be honest, a space that is like really unclear, right? Like we're, what is going to happen in our world tomorrow, next week in 2024? It's who the fuck knows at this point, really? Like, I mean, it's who knows. And so how, and how yeah. you, so 
This is so important because part of leadership is being agile, flexible, being able to pivot, you know, not just in a retail environment where that's like so real in your business, but in this day and age, I don't think there's any business that can't afford that that must have leaders that have those qualities and what i'm hearing you saying is having a coach gave you a place to process all of the mumbo jumbo and then boil it down to be like mm-hmm. okay i'm clear i may be i may not be clear tomorrow but in this moment i have clarity mm-hmm. and that's the, i move forward with that clarity and then i can serve others i can support my team i can support my customers absolutely my business my community my family right so that's brilliant yeah, it's it's been a, a game changer for sure. I'm very grateful for having a coach. And then on the like to you know on the flip side of that, yeah, managing others. I think the the biggest thing that coaching, the skills of coaching, has done for me as a manager of people is um, prior BC before coaching, um, I would have wanted to take on everyone and everybody's feelings. I would want to have tried to fix it for them, right? Like I want you to be able to come to this space, our store, whatever it is and feel good. And like, but in in the world that we're in now, there's no way that any one person, any one manager could take on the experience, the experience says that, you know, 40 individuals are having in this ever-changing world and be able to function at all. You're not only are you not going to be as a manager, be able to solve anything for them, like as, as powerful as us managers are in people's lives. And I do think that we do make a, a big impact. Um, we're not going to be able to shift how a global pandemic has impacted your life. You know, like it's just, that's, that's the reality of it. So what it's done for me is given me a skill that allows me to listen very intently. Like they know that I'm listening to them, but I'm hearing them, but it's given me the confidence and the knowledge that I am not going to solve all of the chaos that's happening for them. So how can I serve to be curious that support them perhaps in bottom lining one thing on one day and then remove myself from that conversation to be able to go on and do it again and again and again and again. And, um, and that has been a beautiful gift. I think it's one of the things, you know, that I, I, for me, what's over the past four years, what I've, what I've really come to understand about myself is that this skill of coaching, the skill of as a coach that we have, whether we're managers, whether we, whether we do just simply have um, clients as coaches, the skill of coaching is making a, it, it is making a crucial impact on the humans that are living through this chaotic world. And, um, and so it's, it's given me, it's allowed me both having both the coach and being a coach has allowed me to also identify like a big, a purpose, you know, really and truly like it's, it's a purpose. So how do I hold all of that? Um, it, it, it's, it's because I know that it's my purpose and I know when I need to like take a little break from it too and restore and having the skills of coaching, having a coach has allowed me to kind of see all of that all at once. And, um, and being able to like, I almost see it like, as like, you're riding just the waves, right? We're riding the waves of what is occurring in the world and how that's impacting the humans that are, are navigating it alongside us. This is so important, Holly, you know, any people manager of the past four years, their role has up leveled so much because we have not been able to have those separations between work life, personal life. And um, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I've always wanted this people manage managers to have these skills Mm -hmm. that we're speaking about the piece. I really hear you leaning into it's, I call it's the coaching mindset. And for our guests who are coactively trained or looking at the coactive model, it's the cornerstone of People are naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. Mm. And what happens when we practice? Because I believe it's a practice. Many of us were conditioned to fix people because Mm. we're conditioned that everything's a problem and people are problems and we need to fix them. 
But by really embodying people who are naturally creative, resourceful, and whole, or the coaching mindset, you realize it's their responsibility to, like you said, navigate the crisis, the chaos, the constant change. It's their responsibility to find their solutions, to take care of their well being. But you can be a witness, you can be a champion, you can ask those powerful questions that help them lead to that solution. You know, in a way that's very genuine and authentic, um, and and you can hold space for their humanity, right? Without yeah. being like, okay, now we're gonna have a therapy session and like and yes. take it all on, which so many managers do, and we've mm-hmm. seen that's why the level of burnout is so high. Mm-hmm. And eighty five percent of employees across North America are disengaged and looking for work in other organizations. They're burnt out because mm-hmm. they're organization hasn't invested in them in this way that you've been mm-hmm. invested in to be able to navigate the world that is our new world in this moment. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I know. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. This is what's going on, folks. Pull up the seat. Pull up the seat. <laughs> oh, I love it. Wild times. Mm-hmm. The wild times. What is your when you think about your purpose mm. and where you see yourself going, where do you see yourself five years? Mm. Ago? Mm. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think I, I know that there is, um, first of all, I'm getting kind of clear on this for myself right now. I'm working a lot. I'm working a lot on this internally um, and externally asking some, people questions in different fields that I'm looking into. But um, at, the, at the end of the day, what I know my purpose is, is it is to create impact by the way we bring in humanity to the workplace, right? Like we are, we are, we are not just workers and we are not just humans. And how we weave those two together, it has to be in this ever-changing environment, very strategic, very, there, there's just, there's so much to it. And it's also ever-changing. But I believe that if we, if I am committed to making the human in front of me or supporting the human in front of me, me to be able to tap into their own authenticity, to their own self-acceptance, and also to the own to their own knowledge of the possibility that's out there, that we're not just, we don't have to do, we don't have to do things the way we've always done them. And clearly it's not working. Right. So there's just this like ripple effect that I believe is possible when we start with the individuals that are in front of us, when we invest in these organizational programs, it's like organizational change is going to ultimately lead to system change because if if our people are able to come to work and be themselves wholly and fully, then they are going to want to be more and better and, and exactly, and give exactly who they are. And who, I mean, like, who am I to say what someone else has to offer, right? Like they are to say that. And so how can I, how can I give that to them? So ultimately there's certainly coaching is in my future. And, um, and I do, I love, I love to teach and train also, because I do think that there are there. I, I, I look at as a manager in my experience um, and with many, many peers over many years, many different types of people, you usually have a spectrum. And I, and I think like um, radical candor, Jill Scott speaks to this some in there, but you've got, you got managers who are, um, I'm not, I can't remember the word she used, but we're just overly compassionate, right? Like, it's like, we're almost like too kind, too empathetic. You can't be direct in your feedback. And then you other have other managers who are on the opposite end of the spectrum who can see so black and white. And that's also a beautiful skill set. They're both really needed. And where I, where I see this, this, the, the beauty of coaching and the beauty of coaching within the realm of management is it gets, you get to the middle of those things where you're addressing the human beings in front of you. And you're also building organizations that, that care, but that are also productive and creating more and more and more in our world and in our society. So yeah, there's something to training um, in that realm that, that really speaks to me that I'm very passionate about. So we'll see. 
Yeah. <laughs> I tell people, you're the bridge, you know, you're going to help us continue to be the architects of this new way of working and living because we're all in the muck together and we're trying to figure it out. We are. Yeah. We are figuring it out. Great we're figuring it out. I feel like we're all in it. We're in the muck together and we're, we're trying to figure it out. And so, you know, and some of it's working and some of it's not, but like, how can we all, yeah. How can we be in the effort of evolution together? Yes. Yeah. Give us your bottom line of what you would say the ROI of coaching in the workplace is. Mm. Yeah. The ROI of coaching in the workplace is lit up human beings who are capable of so much more than they even know that they're capable of. It is long-term people pipeline, you know, it's, it's, it's building pipeline in your organization. People it's building tenure. People are going to want to stay. They want to grow. Um, and then it's their performance when it comes to like, you know, we talk so much about KPIs and, um, and of course we're, we're a business, we're a global business. And I know I'm speaking to the many people that are probably also part of large organizations and um, the KPIs that you produce are what at the end of the day can fund a lot of this coaching training and so many other beautiful things that can support the world. And so um, the ROI of coaching is the, is, is the, the performance you're going to get out of people authentically. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's an authentic like being that can occur that impacts every single productivity KPI you could ever input into whatever business you're running, right? It's like, you've got to have the people there wanting, capable, and, and like even hungry to do it for themselves. And if they're able to do it and hungry to do it for themselves and can see how it's serving them, then it is just going to naturally serve your organization. Mm-hmm. Mm people stay connected to you and find you and go on this journey with you as you continue to develop yourself as a leader, as a coach in your own, in your own work. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You can, um, you can catch me. Um, I have a, I've got a website. Um, it's my name. It's hollyilderton.com. I'm sure we can, we'll just type that out for you somewhere as it's a, it's an interesting name. Um, and then on Instagram as well. And again, that it's just uh, at Holly Ilderton coaching. Thank you for sharing your passion and your wisdom and being such a lived example of this work. I, I really think you're a model of what does it mean to be a coach-like leader and what does it mean to put the development of others first and knowing that that impacts business results. Like you've just, you know, you've, you were the bridge. You just really embody the bridge. I appreciate mm -hmm. you for your wisdom. Aww. Thank you, Christy. Thank you so much for asking me to to be on this podcast. I feel um, honored, and um, and since we've had this conversation, I'm now I'm I'm lit up. I'm like ready to go out there and have some more conversations today about about all of this. And at the end of the day, it's like the, it's about the humans and how do we how do we build a um, a a like thriving society based on the human experience, and that's what we're that's what we're up to. And that's where we'll stop right there. Mic drop. <laughs>